Hi, Jan. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kul Hada. I am so excited about this party. Hi, Rashad. Hi. 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 How are you? Good, good. I wanted to join from Can you Yeah. Ah, okay. Did you join from the Hi, or from Russia? Hi, this I'm on Russia, I think. You want to do through Lukum? Yalla, you can exit and try again. Okay. So I know, do I know how to exit? Ah, oh, that I can't help you with. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we'll go with so, we'll stay through it. Okay, we'll wait for a few minutes until it's nine. Exactly. But Rasha, I'm so excited about, we're not going to start, but I just want to say I'm so excited about this. Yani, I can't tell you how many questions how often I get questions yeah. about the publishing. And I'm like, I'm not necessarily the right person to, to answer these questions. Uh, but hello, we'll the same here, I get a lot of questions, but I don't to do this. So, you know, thank you for that. Okay, I, know I, have any, I don't want to say, like, I have a template, you know, but, you know, I do have, like, the same, like, a message saying, listen, this was my experience, yeah. this is what it is. But I'm like, okay, you know what? We need to actually do a, a lot about this because it's amazing how many women... Especially, I know we have men coming in here, including my brother. But let's focus on women for now. So many women and moms, they ask me uh, these questions. So hello, I'm excited to answer these questions. And we're going to be saving the lives. And, and so many people told me the timing doesn't work right. for them. So we'll also save the live. We'll post it and people can refer to it. Sounds good. Um, um, is it nine yet? And I just realized that you know, my watch, my wrist one, three minutes exactly wrong. Left, I think. Hi, Yanal. Yanal, are you thinking of writing a book? I love having men on board, so يعني, I'm fully supportive yes, of that. Obviously, we support men. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, exactly. Think, I think I saw my mom pop up. Hi, mom. Oh, <laughs> hi, auntie. She's actually, she's a poet, and she wants to publish her poetry at some point. So. Yalla! Yeah. Yalla, auntie, we're waiting. <laughs> oh, hi, auntie. Rafa? Rafa, that's her name. Oh, that's right. Maybe. Good. Yanal. Yanal, cookbook, cookbook. Okay, I think we should start. Yeah, it looks like a lot first of people are on board. Yeah, exactly. So, first of all, Rasha, thank you so much for accepting to do this live. As we were just saying, Yanni, you, and when I first reached out to you, you're like, listen, Dima, I get so many questions. I also have like a message that I send out. So it's clearly something that a lot of our, you know, community members feel interested in because, Yanni, I think there's nothing more powerful than being able to spread your words and your ideas and your thoughts, whether it's in a book or in any form. So today we're going to look at what it means to publish through a publishing house. So we're not focusing on the self-publishing. We'll talk about the difference. But before that, Rasha, can you just introduce yourself, who you are, what's Lukum, and etc. And then we'll go on to the next question. Sure. So uh, my name is Rasha Murtada, and I'm the founder of Lukum, which is a boutique publishing house, mainly for children's books, but also some adults in Arabic and in English. It's based in Beirut. And um, the name Lukum comes from, you know, Rahat al-Halum, the Turkish delight, Lukum, because I really think that books are meant to be these like sweet little bites that should be savored and enjoyed. They should be rich and, you know, that sort of thing. So that's how I came up with the name. And that's the sort of the, the ethos of the books that I make. They're these like, well, I like to think that they're, they're these like lovely, high quality uh, production and content um, and things that are meant to be, to stay with you, to be handed down to the next generation, that kind of book, a book that's really a gift in a way. Um, so yeah, I started that about, it's almost like four or five years ago now. Um, okay. And yeah, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, writing books for kids, publishing books for kids is, is just an amazing thing and connecting with people and having people tell you that they enjoy your books and that their kids enjoy your books is an amazing thing. So 
You know, I think everybody Absolutely. should do it. And I, have to, yeah, I have to say, yeah, I have a few of Lukum's book and I can, yeah, yeah, I can vouch the quality is amazing. Yeah, uh, and it's one of my favorite books. It's in Arabic. It's a great uh, job. About, Mona, Mona Karawi did a great job. Mona did an amazing job. It's all about professions. Or oh, she breaks, you know, gender bias. Fi home. It's amazing, amazing, amazing book. High quality. So yes, uh, everything you said, I can say in my part as a reader, as well. Uh, everything you said is absolutely true about your books, and I think that's why you know your publishing house is so special. Or oh, it has really, really unique, hand-picked uh, books. Tell you. But tell, tell us a bit about you, because in Tikaman, you have a uh, yani, long experience in writing. You're very passionate about it. You write beautifully. Yeah. So tell us a bit about that. And now, I also want the viewers to see that Inti, you may have started off as someone who writes personally, and then it evolved into starting a publishing house. So tell us a bit about your experience professionally. Um, so I, I love writing. I've always been a writer, like not, not a professional writer necessarily. I've written articles and things like that. Um, but I've always loved to write fiction and I've always wanted to be published. And I've always had this idea of starting a publishing house for children's books down the line. And then I thought to myself, like, why down the line? Why not just do it now? Um, so I think maybe most publishers are people who love to write or at least love to read, I think. Um, and it, yeah. it helps if you have an eye for good writing, obviously, when you're a publisher. Um, and yeah, I mean, I didn't initially set out to write most of the books for Lukum because I'm a publisher. I should be publishing other people as well, which I'm still working on. Um, but yeah, it just so happens that I, you know, I get an idea and I decide to develop it myself. Uh, and it turns into, you know, a book that I've written, but I work obviously with great illustrators and designers. And that helps a book, especially for children's books, that helps a book come to life. Illustration is as important as text, I think. It adds to the text, it, it brings it to life, it lets the kids use their imagination. It's a very important part, so, yeah. Absolutely. So, the most basic question, which mm -hmm. I get you know, on average, again, once a week at least, best describe to us, what is the publishing process? So I wrote a text, I have this text in my hand, and I'm like, oh my God, Dima, can you help me out? What do I do next? So from your perspective as a publishing house, what are what's the process of publishing a book okay so it's a it's kind of a long process obviously it starts with the text Very long. You go to a publisher uh, you can have have it illustrated or not illustrated the publisher can uh, set you up with an, with an illustrator if if you need that but basically you go to a publisher with your text and it's important to research your publishers before you go to them to see their style what kind of books they like um, because, you know, they're not going to be interested if it's not something that fits in with their brand. So one of the most important things, I think, is for somebody to do their research. Look at the kind of books that you like or the books that you like to emulate and check out those publishing houses, see what their procedure is for accepting submissions and things like that. Um, you know, sometimes the bigger publishers generally won't take a submission directly from an author. You have to go through an agent. And that's, uh, that's not very common in the Arab world, but if you're targeting, let's say, the Western world or Europe or, or the US, you would generally have to go through an agent for the big publishers. The smaller publishers will tend to work directly one-on-one -on -one with an author. Um, so, I mean, getting an agent is a whole other thing. We can get into that later, I guess. Uh, but so you approach the, the publisher, and if they like it, what the publisher does is then take on that work. They will basically what they're paying you, they will, and we'll get into publishing contracts, I think later, but what they're paying you for is the right to use your work in certain contexts and territories and all that sort of thing for a certain period of time. Uh, so mm. then they take on basically everything from that point. They'll have the book illustrated, designed, edited, first of all, most importantly, to make sure the text is up to standard. Um, illustrated, designed, the production, everything that goes into the printing and the production of the book. And from there, they'll also distribute your book to booksellers, to other big distributors, let's say like Amazon or something. Uh, they'll work on the marketing and the sales of the book. Uh, so it's basically like they take everything on from end to end. And you're, you're obviously still the author, you retain your copyright, but they um, have basically taken over that book for certain territories in a certain period of time. 
Um, and yeah, it's their responsibility to market it, sell it, all of that. Um, yeah, that's basically yeah. it. And I can say, yeah, I, mean, I think one of the main things that you said that I think are very, is very important, which, and I, maybe I made that mistake when, when I started looking to publish my book with Muna Abudeye, you know, is yeah. that we reached out to every publisher. You know, so the, the research part, we skipped that, you know. So even we, we sent our draft to Lukum and you're like, listen, it doesn't fit our vibe, obviously. Yeah, it's you a know, lovely book, yeah, it just doesn't fit. The it's a lovely book, but it doesn't fit yeah. exactly. So so for us, you know, it's also very important. That's one of the main points. I wish I knew that before. Um, you know, although I did obviously take time. it. Yeah. Exactly. Because we started sending out... Exactly. And, you know, we started sending out our script, you know, obviously trying to write up some NDAs, you know, and, and so on. But really researching the researching, researching the publishers is so important as well, because yani, Anna, I want someone to believe in my text and want it. Yani, that's why I always tell like people who reach out, like they're so deflated and so upset that they didn't. I'm like, but really, you don't want to work with a publisher who doesn't want your text, you know. So actually, it's exactly. good, at least from the start Sorry, it's yes. not working, you know? Publishing is kind of like dating. You want to find that person who's going to connect with you and understand you and get who you are. So don't be disappointed if somebody rejects you. That's just not the right fit for you, you know? Yeah. Exactly. So that would actually, so Ehna, what you said is, Yanni, the two things that you said, oh, what is she? A, it's a long process. That's something I didn't know. So I did feel frustrated <laughs> throughout the process. And I'm like, it seems like, like, like a year to, yeah, to, to produce. It take up to a year. Yeah. Do your research. And, and also the process, I think, for readers, when they look at the book, they think, oh, illustrators and a text. You know, that's what you just mentioned is the editing takes time, you know, the going back and forth. We want to change these words. We don't want to change these words. The graphic design, you know, of the actual book, how is it going to look like? Because for us, we think, oh, it's illustrations. It's done. Actually, the graphic design, how is it going to look like? Yeah, that's, and then that's the something distribution. I learned, yeah, that the design is very important. Like, you don't just send files to a printer. It has to be designed in a specific way and specific uh, dimensions and everything and it's a, it's a whole job onto itself yeah it's a whole job and again that's something i personally didn't know luckily Mona, uh, who's my co-author you know she's experienced in that but you know even any you know, the communication with the printers and we did it through the publisher but you know the samples that they send you look at the samples what you didn't like okay the graphic design change this thing so actually it is a very long process and that's the message i guess from russia and myself if you do find yourself a publisher you know, make sure you understand that it could take you a year, a year yeah. to publish a book. And because that's also for the reason. Done right. Because if you're printing a thousand exactly. books, you know, you don't want to have to throw them all away if you've made some mistakes. Or exactly. Like the, the exactly. Meticulous Find the time for it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So what I want to ask you now is that are there any kinds of different publishing contracts. I know we had we have a unique contract but in general any what does it mean a mom or whatever a woman or a man or whatever it is they come they they send the text yes we love your text okay what happens next it's i mean it's uh, not a lot of people know what goes into a publishing contract and sometimes people are surprised but um and most publishing contracts are kind of standard in a way especially the big publishing okay. houses you always have room to negotiate but with the bigger publishing houses, it's usually like set. But the whole idea, like I said, of what the publisher does is they're basically licensing the rights from you to produce your book in a certain format. So as I said, copyright is very important. You will retain your copyright as an author, as an illustrator. And copyright is, people ask me about copyright a lot. Like, how do we get it? How do we do it? It's simply writing like the copyright on the page, on a certain page of the yeah. book. And that's, that's pretty much it. That should protect you. Obviously, if somebody tries to steal or plagiarize any of your work, you might have to, I don't know, go to court or something. But this is just to show that this is, this is the person who is legally the owner of this work. So that copyright stays with you. What the publisher does is they're paying you to license these rights to print this book. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll give you, what they do is they give you royalties. Um, and again, not a lot of people know how royalties work, so I'm going to get into that for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so basically, royalties are a percentage of the sales of the book. 
and they can be done in two ways. So either it's a percentage of the retail price, and that's the price that you see in the bookstore. So let's say just to make it easy, ten dollars. And usually, mm. it's the the royalties for the author are between five and ten percent. And I know that doesn't sound yeah. like a lot. I remember when I first heard about this, I'm thinking, oh my God, the publisher gets 90%. The publisher does not get 90%. Let me just tell you. <laughs> so there yeah. are all sorts of expenses and everything. So at the end of the day, the publisher makes about the same as the author after you know recouping their expenses and all of that. Um, and 10% is like a really good royalty. That's what the big publishing houses will give you. So anywhere between five, you know, 5% for the smaller publishing houses, the independent ones, uh, up to 10%. So let's say that means for every $10 book they sell, you get a dollar. So that's one way for, of doing it. The other way is a percentage of the net profit. And that's basically what the publisher sees after uh, taxes, after commissions to the distributors. Usually a distributor or a bookseller will take up to 50% of the retail price, which I know sounds like a lot, but that's kind of the industry standard. Amazon take up to 60%. So when you look at it that way, um, a publisher would get like $5 of a $10 book. So then they would give you anywhere between 10 and 20% of that, which basically adds up to the same thing, but it's just a different way of, of getting your royalties. So that's just something yeah. to keep in mind if you see in a contract, it could be a percentage of the retail price, which is, set or the net profit which can fluctuate depending on how much a distributor takes from that um so yeah so the publisher is paying you these royalties and the royalties are basically for to print a book let's say in certain territories let's say in the uae so this publisher specifically is printing in the uae they're printing in a certain language arabic or english they're doing print books so these are sort of the different uh types of categories that the rights are in. Um, there are also other kinds of rights. So as a bigger publisher, for example, might want worldwide English rights, or they might want mm. just like uh, certain languages, like German rights for Germany and Austria. So there's lots of little sort of caveats uh, in a publishing contract. Mm. And it's something that you and the publisher can negotiate. You know, you might want to retain uh, certain territories where you're publishing with somebody else or where you, you know, that sort of thing. And then there are other kinds of, there's audiobooks, there's ebooks, there's uh, what else? Sometimes, you know, if it's a very big publishing house, there can be film and TV rights. So all of these things are negotiated in the contract and they're usually like mm -hmm. standards. So let's say audio and ebooks might be 25% as opposed to 20%. Um, and yeah, and there's so you get a royalty, a different royalty for each of these categories. Yeah, so print books are one thing. So, you know, oh, okay. and audio okay. books and ebooks are another thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and there's usually there's like an industry standard for all of these, but every publisher might be slightly different. different. Um, and you can, you know, obviously you can say that I only want to sell like the language rights for this language or something. I want to retain all the others. So you can retain as much of your rights as you want. You know, you can be like, okay, I only want you to publish in the UAE. I have something else in mind for Lebanon, you know, Mathalan. Okay. So you can, yeah, you can, you can be as like picky about that. But obviously it depends on what the publisher wants as well. You know, some of them might be like, no, I want worldwide distribution, which is not a bad thing, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, of course, I, I would yeah. be happy. Yeah, but it depends That's on what, right. what you want. Um, and there's also- Let me ask you something. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Go ahead, finish your thought. Uh, and there's also a time frame sometimes on these things. Usually big publishers will not put a time frame on licensing your rights. So they'll just keep publishing and reprint. If the book is doing well, they'll just keep publishing and reprinting, which again is, a, you know, was great. Um, and usually there's a clause in there that if, for example, a year goes by and books aren't selling and, you know, they're all out of stock and they haven't been reprinted, you have the right to take your rights back and go to another publisher. So that's a, a, one of the ways of getting out of like having a book stuck or your rights stuck with one publisher. And then other publishers, smaller publishers might be like, oh, I'll do this for five years. And then we'll like see, we'll renegotiate. 
So it, there could be like a time frame on these rights. But it's just because sometimes people go into it and give away all their rights without noticing what they're doing. And that can be annoying. Like at yeah. some point you'll be like, oh, but I wanted to make my own audiobooks, But, you know, they have the audio rights now. So it's just something to be aware of when you're doing that kind to of thing. And, and one thing that I get asked often is they ask me, you know, when I give my copyright, so basically when you're dealing with a publisher, do you also by definition lose your creative side? So do you get to say, do you get a say in who illustrates the book or even the editing, especially when it's in Arabic, sometimes you use different words, you want yeah. them. So what extent can an author do that? Um, that's that depends on the publisher. That's something you should negotiate like outright and you, know, you want to have, and they won't always agree. You know, you want to have final say on the design. You want to have final say on um, the text. Some of them will agree if they really want to keep you. Some of them might be, you know, no, we have people who know what they're doing, <clears throat> sorry. Mm -hmm. And you know, they'll, for example, they'll show you, give you options for let's say cover design uh, and you pick one. You know, but you can't really yeah. dictate what the covers are going to look like. But it depends. I mean, you have to, and you have to see how flexible you want to be. Like, do you, do you want to be very insistent on certain types of design and things like that? Or do you want to leave it up to them? Um, it's all something that can be negotiated depending on how, you know, how much, how involved you want to be. Okay. And the other thing is, again, it's often easier. And you have some of the big names, you know, that always author with the same publishing house. But it's really sometimes challenging to just enter that market. So do you have any tips for these people who are trying to enter? I mean, I'm just thinking, for example, in Arabic, often, Fatima Sarafitin, tens and tens and tens of books, you know, with Kelly with different publishers. I don't know if she's with different publishers. But she has so many books. And I always think about it, you know, the royalty of 10 to 5 to 10% makes sense to Methalan, if that's the contract, because she has so many books, right? Yeah. So what about someone who just started or they want to enter this world, which is quite competitive, if I'm honest, Yanni. And some of the publishing houses that we reached out to, they're like, you send in your script and we'll get back to you between six to eight months. Yeah. And we're like, oh, oh my goodness, you know? And that's just insane. No, that is, I mean, that's, that is an issue. But what I've found with Lukum specifically, um, that, I mean, obviously, like, I publish Lukum books, but then there's always a thing where you can sell foreign rights to other publishers. And I think that's the way if you're, for example, if you're self-publishing, I've told this to some friends who, who have self-published and they're a bit disappointed that like, oh, I couldn't find a, a publisher or anything like that. If you do a good job self-publishing, um, and if you, I know not everybody can do this, but if you go to the book fairs uh, and sort of promote yourself, uh, you might catch the eye of another publisher who's like, oh, I want to do this book in a different language or uh, for these territories. Let's say like you're, you're in Lebanon, you can go to, you know, Marad al-Kitab or like the Sharjah, um, you know, book, book fair. fair. Uh, thing. Yeah. The Sharjah book fair specifically have started a few years ago, these uh, uh, publishers rights conferences. So you can just, you can go there meet other publishers and everybody's looking to buy or sell rights. So you can start out, if you have a good product, a good book, start out self-published and then aim to get the attention of other publishers. If you have like something that's done, it's much easier than sometimes just coming with the text. And the process for foreign rights is a bit different to like just somebody coming in and submitting their text, you know. Um, so I would recommend that. And if you can find an agent. So what I did for the home is I found an, uh, an agent, I think at the, was at the Bologna Book Fair. Um, and they were, they really liked the books. So they've been promoting my books to other publishers. If you can't f can find somebody to do that for you. I mean, it's, it's a process. Um, but selling foreign yeah. rights is a very good way to get to a publisher. You know, if you already have a book. So if you have your book, Love You From Afar, which is, I yes. love that book. So, Thank you. That's the book. So now I love it. Uh, I, for those who don't know this book, I recommended it. It's so sweet. It's so timely for COVID. It's amazing. It's heartwarming. But basically, this book for you, for example, you have written it in English, and now it's in many other languages. It's in German, I think. It's in German. It's coming out in Turkish, and it's been uh, I mean, published in the U.S. and in Australia. So that's that's a good way to do it because it it takes a lot of the effort off of you as well. You're giving you know 
that publisher obviously will take on all the expenses. So I'm kind of in the author role in that sense here. Exactly. So that's what I want to tell you. So that's what I want to tell you know, everyone who's watching, Yanni, even Dasha, who owns a publishing house, you know, for her yeah. books that she wrote, she managed to find someone, another publisher who spread it uh, across the world. But let's, you know, we might be taking this for granted, is let's just touch upon what's the difference between self-publishing, I know, I know we have to say it and I have an understanding of it, but let's explain yeah. what self-publishing is. We now know what publishing uh, is when it comes to publishing through a publishing house, that's clear, but what does it mean to self-publish and what are the biggest differences? Um, in my mind, it's not that different. I mean, I could consider that the books that I write and publish for Lukum are kind of self-published. Although as a publisher, generally, you do need to have a publishing license. So that's one difference. So I have a publishing license that allows me to publish other people's work. Um, if I didn't have that, I could only publish my own work. So that's one of the distinctions. And the other thing with self-publishing, obviously, is you take on all the aspects of the publishing. Oh yourself and it's it's a big task you know so you have to do all the editing all the you know illustration design or obviously get people to do that for you um, if you want it done well obviously uh, and then you have to do like distribution is a very big part of publishing and it's probably the most painful part of it it's there's a lot of oh my God. pushing and negotiating and trying to get your books into bookstores trying to get people to pay attention to you um, so it's, uh, it's a lot of work. And obviously the other difference is you get to keep all the profits. Um, but obviously you're paying for all the expenses. So it expenses. Kind, of, kind of amounts to the same thing in the end. Uh, but it's, and there used to be a lot of stigma about self-publishing. Like, oh, you can find an author, so you pub uh, a publisher, so you published it yourself. You know, your book must not be that great. But that's not true. I mean, it's a very competitive market. And sometimes you can't get people's attention, you know, for your book. So do it yourself. Why not? I, I recommend that. Some of the best, Yanni, some of the great books that I've recommended on my page have been by self-published uh, individuals, and I love supporting them. Uh, Yanni, and I was, we were also contemplating, should we self-publish, not self-publish? And the idea of having a thousand copies of one book stored somewhere, and I couldn't really think where that would be. Yeah. I'm like, oh my yeah, gosh. Just, you know, That's a thousand awesome. books don't take up that much space, I've realized. Really? Oh my God. I, basically, I don't think I've seen, I have hundreds of books at home, but not a thousand all at once of the yeah. same title, you know. Um, but that's one thing, um, Yanni, hopefully, by the way, Yanni, everyone who's watching, in two weeks, I'm going to have another live with someone who was experienced, uh, very experienced in self-publishing, so you'll get to see that uh, side as well. Um, but Kaman, uh, on that point, Yanni, whether you are, Yanni, doing it through a publisher, or not, Anna, I just want to point out that also reaching out to accounts like my account, any account, anyone who's interested, a bookstagrammer who's interested in reading, yeah. even if you have your own publisher, build these relationships because when you have a book and you're passionate about it, honestly, it's not just about the sales. You just want to send th that message out. So reach out to these accounts and on, honestly, a lot of sales and awareness happens on Instagram and on social media. So take that approach and you know, build those connections. It's not just you know, wrote the book published and you know, please post about it. And it irritates me when people do that. Yeah. Relax, build that rapport. You need share to why you wrote the book. Yeah. Exactly. You uh, your account has been like very supportive of Lokom Anjad and you've really like oh, pushed no. our books and it's yeah. You do agree? Yeah, no, I, I, I push anything that I would have in my home library and I have the homework, so absolutely. Um, but Rasha, Hanna, we, we kind of finished the main questions that I've, um, that we both discussed, but I just wanted to ask you for three tips in general for anyone today who watched the live and they're like, okay, خلاص, I've had this idea for the longest time, I'm going to go write my book. Three tips that can motivate them to actually persevere and continue in this process and try to publish their books. Ooh, three tips. Um, I can give three tips on how to kind of try to succeed in this area. So first of all, if the first yeah. most important thing is just go for it, honestly. Like a lot of people will tell you, oh, it's too difficult, it's too hard, you'll never get published. But just, just go for it, honestly. Like so many people have been surprised by writing something and finding that people love it or finding a home for it. So just 
just do it is the first thing. It's hard work, but do the work, write the book, um, do, like, do the best job you can. So my second tip would be if you're approaching a publisher or anybody like that, uh, make sure that the text or the book itself is in the tip top shape and the best shape that it can be. Because yes, they will edit your book and work on it. But you want to present the best kind of face of what it is that you're doing, the, the highest quality, you know, the highest standards. That way they'll take you seriously and they'll know that, you know, you're somebody to contend with. Um, and my last tip would be, what would my last tip be? Um, just don't give up, like keep promoting your work, keep going to people, try to find, do your research, as I said initially. So research all the yeah, publishers that might important. have books that are similar to yours. Look at all the like the book reviewers, bloggers like yourself who might be interested in the books that you're um, writing. Just find that community that's going to help you move your book forward. Like like-minded people, people who are interested in the same kind of thing that you're doing in the books that you're working on. Um, and just, yeah, just go for it. I mean, it's not easy. Go for it. But when it's done and when it finds a home, when your book finds a home, it's going to be amazing. And when people start to connect with it. Yeah. Good morning. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And I think, again, yani, hi, tip, this is for us. Research. Don't give up. And yeah. give it your all. Yani, and your script is like your CV, right? Yani, it has yes. to be perfect. Perfect. Yani, yes. you know, don't, don't have any like glaring spelling mistakes or typos or like that's the worst. You know, just make sure it's in tip top shape so people will take you seriously. You know, I know that you know what you're doing. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think another thing you said, and honestly, don't be yani, disappointed or I'm just the self publishing route is also an option. Uh, yani, the Amazon, you can self publish through Amazon, you can do all the printing exactly. through Amazon. That's also an option, you know. I'm looking if we have any questions. I know Rania, uh, who was the helicopter mom. She's amazing. By, like a long question. Yeah, so, something like, about writing a blog. Yeah. Um, I know Rania. She's interested in writing a book. I hope she does or books. So yalla. and I know so honestly so many people. I'm just gonna move this away from the thing and try to see if we have the question. It was something about you know I love writing, but I don't usually know how to write plots or something like that. I, I don't know. I can't find it again. I'm not good with Instagram, Sarah. You can all see my forehead now. Oh, um, hi Dima and Rasha. Thank you for this okay. live. What if I'm not writing a topic that I feel is not covered in Arabic language books? Iman, fly with it. Yani, <laughs> I'm not an author. Anna, I might. Go for it, Iman. Especially, I know exactly what Iman is talking about because she reached out. Uh, the topic she wants to cover is absolutely important. There's nothing, almost nothing about it in Arabic done in the right way. Yeah. So do it. And Risha, from my experience, and Anna, I'm not an author, you know, and my experience yeah. is in education. Most people I don't think English. of themselves as writers, but I think most, I think if you have an interest in writing something, you're going to write it well. And then there's always an editor to help correct and shape your text and that sort of thing. But if you feel strongly about something, of course, write about it. And then, then you can have somebody help you fix it up, but go for it, yeah. Well, I think on that point, Rasha, I think you need to find this trusted group, yani, at least from my experience. Yani, ehna, until we started showing the script to publishers, yani, we had, I can't tell you how many parents and, and friends Definitely. look at it and be critical and discuss That's it. Like, this word means this. So really, really, we asked some of the most critical friends and experts to look at the content before we reached out to publishers. Definitely. So That's do a that. That's good idea. Yeah, the more eyes on it, the better. Especially when you're writing for children, if it's a sensitive topic, like yours and that sort of thing. I try to run my books by teachers usually to get a sense of, like, Amazing. do they think the topic is fine? Do they think the tone of the language is fine, is, is easy for kids? It always helps to have somebody who's in the field, take a look at, at your book. Like you said, as many people as possible, the more input, the better, before you do the final sending to a publisher. Like, to get and you know what, Rasha, another thing, yeah, I know a lot of people, I do it just as you know, a favor, that some people send me their scripts, okay? And now I'm like, the first question is, who's your target audience? So much and they would tell me five-year-olds, you know? And then I get the text, and it's like, honestly, 30 pages of dense text. And I'm like, you know, so 
I'm like, I want you to go and get your top five favorite books for that age group. Read it. Exactly. What do you like about it? What are the characteristics that you are really attracted to when you read these books? And then go write your text because the gap between what you're telling me and the, the script is huge. Yani, I don't want to be negative, a, but no, that's a very good point. Me. It's a very good point. If you're going to be a writer, you have to be a reader. That's the first thing. You have to be you have to read across the topic that. that you're writing about to get the styles, to get the You can't be a good writer if you're not an avid reader. Definitely not. Absolutely. Um, well, I, Absolutely. I saw somebody ask a question about whether writers have any control over the sale price. Generally no. I've never heard of a writer having like when you publish your book, in the contract will be usually like this is going to be the retail price of the book. Um if you feel very strongly about it maybe you feel it's too expensive for the you know whatever you could talk to the publisher about it but i don't i don't i mean i've never i would trust the publisher to be honest they, because... they you know because they they've studied the market they know what their expenses are they know exactly. why they're placing it at that price point so unless you have a very good reason to discuss the selling price it's not really that's the business side which the author generally doesn't have a lot of say in yeah absolutely what is this there's a question is drm important for ebook i don't know what drm is drm direct something i i don't know what drm means either <laughs> i have you could tell us idea. what it means um somebody's asking about platforms that offer free courses on how to write yeah i was just going to mention that if you're not if you don't feel you're a writer there are lots of free online courses um you know for how to write for kids uh, like tutorials that sort of thing it's always good to take a look at those because there is a certain format you know you don't have to stick to it but there is a certain way to write for kids and it's always helpful if you have some sort of structure writing workshops yeah and there's another question here by Yanal in uh, he is the one to ask about the um, selling price but how are sales controlled and viewed by the writer Yani how yes, often yes. is the writer updated you know you've sold oh. 200 books yeah, yeah sorry you know? i should have i should have mentioned that that's also mentioned in the pub, in the contract usually uh writers are paid uh royalties generally anywhere between every 3 and 6 months so yeah the the publisher will do like a, a round up of what's been sold and and send you a check or whatever every 3 to 6 months every three to six months yeah uh, i'm trying to remember what <laughs> what hour is yeah. so do you advise that i have my book written and illustrated before con contacting the publisher i mean if you have an illustrator uh in mind and you know you know what you're doing with the illustration sure why not obviously it has to be written before you take it to the publisher uh but illustration you have to think also of the expense you know illustration is expensive exactly so if you want to do that yourself great if you trust the publisher to get your vision for the illustration right you know they'll pay for it so um yeah exactly it depends on what you want so so and honestly when you when the publisher yani yeah, agrees to your script you build that again relationship you know so in in our case you know we have to say on who the, the illustrator was you know because we're like we know this person who understands the vision of the hadad she really did her what you and they were open to that idea um so sometimes publishers will give you a list that's from our experience a list of illustrators that they work with yeah. and say okay you can choose or they would tell you, you know this is the individual you know that we want to we want to pub, uh, illustrate your book so again i think if it's a sensitive topic i think it's something you should discuss with the publisher but if it's just a boy yeah. going to the park and playing yeah. maybe yeah. you can be flexible with them i mean it depends if if you trust yeah. the publisher that they get your vision i mean they usually know what they're doing um exactly somebody asked a good question about when they send their texts out to publishers how can they protect them that's a good point i usually either uh, send a partial text initially and if the publisher likes it you can sell the send the full manuscript um or have it like watermarked you know so that it can't be copied um but, but you're right you, you know people should be careful when sending out their text because you never know if somebody might use it uh, for something else or um yeah so definitely protect your work when you send it send a partial or have it work in like in this area where where in this region where sarah copyright is still not 
yani fully respected. Uh, but exactly. And, <laughs> Um, actually, uh, they answered it's digital rights management, DRM. Um, yeah, okay. I've heard for of ebook. that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that works, but generally a publisher, if, if you give them digital rights, then it depends on whether you want to or not. So you give them the digital rights they can do, <clears throat> sorry, ebooks or maybe apps or things like that. Um, but I, I don't know the nitty gritty of it, like what goes into that. But again, it's a choice for you. Do you want to give them digital rights or not? If you want to keep that for yourself, you can do something with that yourself. That's fine too. Okay, we have another question. Do I as an author have to pay the illustrator or should I have a separate agreement with the illustrator before signing to publisher? So I can answer from my experience in Russia, then you, you mm -hmm. answer that from a publishing. Mm -hmm. so for you from my experience is that and we wanted a specific we have a funny contract it's not a traditional contract but yeah. you will have to, if you want to give the the publishers a script with an illustrate illustrated you have had you have to develop a contract with the illustrator and finalize that or to agree on it obviously copyright etc confidentiality and then you present the publisher with a script and an illustrate with the illustrations but if you just want to send the script to the publisher then you'll do that through the publisher he will, the publishers will have a contract with the illustrator and they'll yeah. do it through them correct yeah. no that's, that's definitely true so if, if you want to have somebody illustrate your book before you send it to the publisher you're going to have to take on that expense have a contract with them and everything like like you would do with any kind of design service um, so it's, it's up to you. It's an additional cost for you. But if, if that's the style, that's something that you specifically want, you can go ahead and do it. But um, if like cost is and issue, right. it's, and, expensive. Like, it's expensive. It's one of the, the biggest expenses in publishing a book are honestly like printing is the biggest expense and then illustration. Yeah. You know, if you want to illustration. illustrator and designer, it's uh, yeah. Because it's a very important it can be book. 200 to 300 the spread, you know, so people need yeah. to also be aware of, the, you know, after the, the readers, when you look at the book and say, oh, it's yeah. expensive, but guys, honestly, like, yeah, it has straight the production value and, like, the illustration exactly. and the paper, and there's so much that goes into a book that, you know, and books are honestly, they have a very low margin. So also, I just want to tell people who are thinking they can make good money writing and publishing, not to, like, burst your bubble, but it's not... <laughs> You, you, unless you're JK Rowling and you're selling millions and millions of books, you're not. You know, you're doing this for the passion yeah. of it. It's not about money. Yeah. You know? so, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I, yeah. saw, uh, I saw something about somebody asking how you can find literary agents in the Arab world. Exactly. And I think there, aren't, there isn't such a thing really as literary agents in the Arab world, as far as I know. Um, mm. So you might be able to go directly to a publisher, I think. Uh, an Arabic publisher, but for like Western publishers, yes, you need an agent. And uh, there are these books, um, they're called the Writers and Artists. Uh, okay. And they publish these books every year of uh, agents in different countries, I think around the world. I used to have an old copy. So that's kind of like the main book that people use when they want to find uh, agents. Is, is it just me or is there some weird echo? It's fine. Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay, good. Just me. Um, so, yeah, so it's called The Writers and Artists, if you Google it. Writers and Artists, Book of um, Agents or something like that. Uh, and they'll have like, a, you have to buy it. It's, I forget how much it costs, but it's a very comprehensive list of agents across the world, what they're interested in. So if you're really serious about finding an agent, that's one that's one way to do it. Another way is to look at your favorite authors or authors who write something similar to you. And you can check who yeah. their literary agent is. And then you can go to that agency's <laughs> website and see what their submission um, requirements are. So that's another, if you don't want to pay for like a, a book of agents, that's another way to do it. Um, yeah. Interesting. And there was a question, what, what publishing houses in the Middle East publish books in English for Arab writers? Lukum. Lukum, <laughs> yes. Um, there's also um, what's it called? Turning Point in Lebanon. Turning Point. It's one of the few 
I don't know a lot of others. There's not a lot of um, publishing I'm houses sure. in the Arab world for English books. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Um, Turning point home and what Arabic. Mm. Yeah, no, these are the two I know. Let's see. How do we find an agent? We answered that. Hello, what do you think of publishing languages in one book, or you prefer to have two separate books? Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, this is a personal, is a personal um, opinion. I don't really like it, although I know maybe for Arabic and English, there is a weird echo, right? <laughs> for Arabic and English, because a lot of kids today, um, they sort of switch between Arabic and English, that could be a good way of getting to them, of teaching them Arabic, to have like Arabic and English text. Um, but I'm, I'm more of a purist. I think the book should be either in Arabic or English. And it also limits it limits you a bit in terms of your your market because it's going to be just specifically for people who are bilingual and it kind of shrinks um your market basically your audience and i so think I'm also aesthetically I've seen some cute books but i don't know yeah and that, come on for me it's more aesthetically and i don't come think in. i've seen a book that, that has done both in an incredible way where it fits nicely on the text it's it's always yeah. been crowded Oh, it now does. I hear the echo. Also because Arabic and English are like opposite directions. So it's like a weird, like, which, which way does the book start? You know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a personal choice. There's also a question. If I already have the illustrations done, does that mean the publisher has to pay me more as a writer? Because I basically have saved them that. I don't mm, think so. No, no. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with it. The, the author just gets paid <clears throat> royalties from sales of the book. So that doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. So that's why you need to think if you want to do your illustrations yourself before sending it to a publisher. It's an added expense that you're not going to get back. So. Yeah. The, the upside is you have creative control on the illustrations. Exactly. It will be your thing. You'll decide that it up. That's also expensive. It depends how important uh, we have Another question. How do I know uh, of for the topic I want to publish about which publisher to approach, as Vidasha said, research, research, research. So if a publishing house is publishing non-fiction books all the time, you're not going to take a fiction uh, script, or if they talk about mainly social issues, you're not going to take uh, an activity book to them. So really yeah. research the publishers exactly. before. Go onto their uh, websites, <laughs> look at their books, like actually look at the books that they make, like get, you know, get a couple of books from the bookstore, just like leaf through them at the bookstore, see the quality, the, you know, the themes, the type, all of that sort of thing, and see if you're a good fit for that, or if they align with your values as well. Um, by the way, everyone just mentioned, I just read it, you know, the echoes from me, so I apologize. Okay. I have no idea how to fix that. <laughs> it doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> um, okay, someone mentioned universal publisher and distributor in Lebanon. I don't know any. You know universal publisher um no it's very hard to find it's it's only like the very big publishing houses like uh, most small publishing independent publishing houses are going to publish in certain territories you know it's very hard to break into different markets so if a publisher mm -hmm. can publish in, in two or three countries or regions that's you know that's amazing very few publishers have worldwide um coverage you need like oh, a harper rich. collins or a simon and schuster or somebody like that um so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. We have actually a nice question here, Retra. If I'm a self -pub if I'm self publishing my children's book, how much copies do you recommend to start with? I want to publish it in Arabic in in an Arabic version and English. Um, it depends how you're printing. So if you're doing um, there's like digital printing, which is not as expensive as what's known as like traditional printing or offset printing, which is like the huge printers you see in the printing houses. And those usually require, if you're gonna get a good cost per book, you have to print at least a thousand books, which sounds like a lot, but that's, that's the minimum. And I mean, just to give you like, selling a thousand books, if you're like a new author or publisher or whatever, it can take a couple of years, you know, it's, uh, that's the kind of volume you're looking at. So don't be discouraged if like, you don't sell out your books in like a few months or something. 
But if you're doing the traditional publishing, yeah, you'll need to publish around a thousand. If you're doing digital publishing, which is not going to be as high quality, it depends again what you're going for. Um, maybe print to start out, print a couple of hundred books of each to see like what the reception is to that. And with digital publishing, because you can reprint again easily and it's not a lot of added cost. Whereas with traditional publishing, every time you print a thousand, it's going to cost quite a lot as opposed to if you print, let's say, 2,000, 3,000, it'll get marginally cheaper. So if you're cheaper. doing digital printing, smaller quantities. Traditional printing, you have to do bigger quantities to start. Okay, we'll take one last question and then we'll wrap up. It says, if I'm targeting Lebanese all yeah. over the world, should I go towards a Lebanese publishing house, self-publishing, or each country region a different publishing house? Um, well, that depends. If you can get, if you can get a big publisher to take on your book, then that's kind of covered if they're going to publish it worldwide. Um, if you're starting smaller, I would go with a, a publishing house in Lebanon. If you're, I mean, if you're talking, targeting Lebanese people, I, I'm guessing that the topic has something to do with Lebanon. Otherwise, Lebanon. are you targeting like Arabs in general or like, you know, Arab speakers, yeah. Um, but if you're, yeah, if it's like a Lebanese specific topic, I think you should go for a Lebanese publishing house. Uh, see what markets they cover. They might do like certain areas of the Arab region, like, you know, UAE, Egypt, Saudi. I mean, you never know, you'll have to ask. Um, and then maybe if you want to expand into other markets, you can look into other, other publishers as well. But no need to go like to 10 different publishers in 10 different countries. Like just start out with one, focus on them. And then see and, how and you can sell foreign rights to other countries and, you know, uh, just take it one step at a time. And one other thing, Russia, is um, finding, also connecting online with online books, booksellers. You know, there are amazing, amazing booksellers, especially, oh, the, the echo, especially like in the U.S. for Arabic books. Reach out to those people, especially if you're self-publishing, you know, and even to be frank, a lot of publishers don't even know about these, you know, uh, very boutique uh, online stores. But if you manage to build relationships with 10 of them and each of them buys 50, that's a lot of books, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so you also online do... booksellers are a good way to go or online distributors. Like there's, uh, there are all sorts of online bookstores like Uli uh, Jamalun have not had the greatest track record with me. But, you know, there are that sort of... Oh, actually, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, like there's Shabati. You know, things like that. There are lots of online startups that... Uh, that will sell your books, exactly. and, you know, sell them worldwide or to certain regions. So you don't have exactly. to be limited to physically selling in the place that your publishing house is. So yeah, no, that's a very good point. Yeah, I know. Many, many. Okay. I, I have an, uh, by the way, I have a highlight of these bookstores. But I think we took much longer than half an hour. It was supposed to be a half an hour live. <laughs> yeah. But Rasha, do you have anything else you want to say or? Um, no, I think just like we were talking about the tips, just go for it, do your research, do your work. I mean, it, it's meticulous work to write a book. You have to be thorough. You have to make sure you're not making any mistakes. You have to have a lot of people read it, as Dima was saying. It's, it's a process, like expect it to take time from the writing itself to seeking out publishers, to the publishing process itself you know it could take a while but it's it's a worthwhile journey at the end it's so just keep keep going at it yeah keep going oh from my end as always always happy to support anything arabic anything that we can support hello it's english best to support our children to support any month like any mom who's writing a book please reach out Urasha, thank you so much for your time. I think this thank is you. probably one of the most informative lives I've done. I wish I had done that I two so. and a half years ago. <laughs> two and a half years ago before publishing our book. But thank you so much for your time. And hopefully we'll do another one, another follow-up. Uh, yeah, 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 thank you so much. It's not too country. cold and rainy in, in London. It's, oh, enjoy. Uh, it's cold, but it's not raining, so it's good. I don't know. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone, thank you. for joining. Thanks, Bye. Everyone. Bye.